All right. My name is Olivier. I am a photographer in Zurich, Switzerland, and today we are going to talk about the Leica M9. The Leica M9 was released on the 9th of September 2009. There's no coincidence there. Um, I bought it in 2016, though. Why are we talking about the M9 today? Well, I have been in the market for a new camera. I have been looking at the Leica M10P, which is a fantastic camera. It is also a fantastically expensive camera. I mean, the sheer cost of this camera has made me reflect a lot about the state of my photography today. I used to run a portrait photography business and a wedding photography business for about four or five years. It's made me uh, reflect about the gear that I have, especially the M9, considering that the M10P uh, will replace the M9 uh, in its use primarily. Now, I'm not gonna go and pull out all the photos that I've ever done, but I am gonna focus a lot on the photos that I've done over the past uh, few uh, four years with the Leica M9. And I, I, I also want to uh, answer the question as to whether the photos created by the M9 actually still uh, stand a chance in comparison to all these uh, modern cameras and the images produced by all these modern cameras today. The M9 is it's, uh, da, 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 it's 11 years old, but does that really make a difference or not? Um, I won't be comparing it in, from a feature point of view. I'm really just interested in the end result and how we got to the end result, the photo itself. I hope you enjoy the video and the photos, there are going to be a few of them, um, that this camera and I have produced over the past four years. So the photos that you're seeing now are from a recent walk through Zurich City. I'm not an architecture photographer and I'm definitely not a street photographer either. Um, but there's something about these buildings that I love photographing I guess maybe it's just their sheer size and the lives that they house within which is a bit of a paradox really considering that the rangefinder fulfills my desire to connect with people and with my subject and I end up deciding that the subject of uh, this walk are these massive buildings which prevent me from actually connecting to the people inside, which I guess is a good thing, but there is a, a beauty about them that I enjoy. So on the topic of a rangefinder and optical viewfinder and this desire to connect, um, this is the optical viewfinder I'm referring to right here. And basically what it is, is it's just a window on the top left camera that you can see straight through, right? So take a picture, cool. How it differ differs obviously from uh, an SLR is the fact that in an SLR, you've got this mirror that then, yeah, I just took two photos. So uh, when you take a photo, there's a blackout of the actual moment, right? And you know, if you're watching this video, I'm not gonna I don't have to teach you about this stuff, you probably already know. Um, <clears throat> but that's something that I really appreciate about the M9, in general about rangefinders, that I can still stay connected to that moment um, and that I can still, when I take a, the, the picture of a moment or when I'm connected to that subject uh, and I take this photo, I don't actually lose the moment. I don't miss the bit that is then captured, I still see it, I continuously see it. And that is something I really appreciate. So as you know, um, or I would assume you know, <clears throat> the parallax error that uh, happens as a result of the optical viewfinder not being a through the lens uh, viewfinder, uh, which means basically I'm looking through this window up here and I don't see what the lens sees exactly, right? So. Uh, the lens sees my right index finger and I see my left index finger. So there's there's a bit of a um, <clears throat> There's a bit of a Difference right between what we see <laughs> yeah. um, th This doesn't make the, uh, the rangefinder um, 
to be the, the best camera that you could possibly have for composition. But to me, I find it's actually, it helps me um, compose my photos a lot, especially when I, I think of composing lines or, or I want to have this bit of the subject here and that bit of the subject here and I want to have that shadow go here and all that. Sometimes I've got the view, I've got the lens which is blocking the viewfinder, right? And then you've also got this adjust thing where you've got the frame lines not being exactly there where it, it might actually take the photo of. Um, I've found that it makes me focus a lot more. I have to um, really imagine the way this photo is going to look like and you don't have that with a, a, a DSLR or an SLR for that matter or anything where you can look through exactly what the uh, lens sees. Um, it's not been an issue for me. I don't do much macro photography. If I'm coming this close, then it's going to be a big issue. Good luck imagining that. But um, since I'm not the big macro uh, photographer, um, also with the minimum focusing distances on these rangefinders not being so minimum unless you buy an adapter, um, I've never really found it to be uh, a problem. I, I, it's, it's, it's part of the rangefinder experience and I embrace it, to be honest. So despite the M9 not being the leader of the pack for composition, the frame lines in the M9, and they move as you focus to compensate for approximately where your frame is going to be. And to me, that's always been enough to decide on my composition. Now, um, I also wanted to really throw these next set of uh, photos in here because um, through the M9, I've started photographing flora a lot more often and I'm not quite certain why. I guess maybe there's something about the way the M9 sensor captures it. I'm not certain, but um, especially the black and whites, um, it's, a subject I've started to photograph and enjoy photographing a lot more um, through the M9, which I'd never really done with my SLRs before. Now the other bit about the rangefinder, obviously, uh, and the M9 is it is really small. Um, it is it's, this is a full frame camera, um, and it's small. It's light. And it's great to take on walks and hikes. So let me just, I happen, I just so happen to have a 35 millimeter lens here. Oh, it's got the lens hood on, so I'm gonna take the lens hood off. Um, this is the 35 millimeter Summilux. Um, great lens, fantastic lens. Um, and this is the Sigma 35 millimeter 1.4, so it's the same focal length and the same aperture um, as the Sumi looks. And I mean, the, the difference in size is focus on the lens, buddy. You got the lens? You got, the, you got it? All right. The difference in size is just huge, as well as weight. I mean, you, you just, you really cannot compare these two lenses. Um, and now imagine attaching that to different size cameras. So, <clears throat> this is the rangefinder, and this is the uh, Canon EOS um, 3, which is a great camera. I love it. I, I absolutely, I think it's fantastic. But again, you see the differences in size. I mean, it's just, it's, it's you can't compare it to. And then when you go and put this on, and now when you attach the lenses, I mean, that is just crazy. So I totally messed something up here with the audio and um, that's why now I'm voicing this over instead. I didn't want to cut it out because I uh, managed to get a good uh, comparison of size. Anyways, here we're back to the normal audio. Um, yeah, the, there's, there's, when you're going on a hike, uh, like the photos that you're about to see here, um, you appreciate all the weight that you don't have to carry, and that's that's really fantastic about the M9 as well. Uh, in general, the, the whole Leica M system. These next few images were taken on a hike in the Alpstein area, and it was great to take the Leica M9 and the 35mm 
Sumi looks and know that you've just have got so much quality in this compact package. And it doesn't have to be major hikes, just even uh, short walks in nature. I really do appreciate the size uh, versus quality factor that you have with the Leica M9 and the Leica lenses. So the other bit is this camera is a lot less uh, unassuming, to be honest. It's a lot less assuming um, than and these big fat cameras. I mean, uh, the, the SLRs, don't get me wrong, I'm not knocking SLRs. I've shot, uh, my entire wedding photography business was built on three SLRs and a Fuji X100. Um, so they're great cameras, but it's just, um, these, the range finders I find, especially the Leica M9, my Leica M7 especially, um, they're so unassuming. They let you, uh, they let you, they let you be part of the scene. They don't take away that much from the scene. They they can they don't distort the scene as much as an, a bigger camera would. What I mean by distort is that despite being seen taking a photo with the M9, I feel like an absolute ninja. <laughs> I whatever is going on doesn't stop going on and it allows me to just capture one part of that little moment and i really like that now i've taken my uh, m9 on a few portrait shoots that's what i do most of the time nowadays but not that many to be honest um i'm not quite certain why I know I'll be taking my M10P a lot more, um, so stay tuned for that. For the M9 though, what I found, or how I've ended up using it the most, has generally been to take portraits of my wife and our life together. Sometimes candid and sometimes less candid but it's just been a, a fantastic camera to make photos for the sake of photography, for the sake of connection, and simply the joy. And that's really what the Leica M9 and all the Leica M cameras are about for me. Joy. It's what Leica does so well. This act of restraint that allows you to focus on only the essentials, das Wesentliche. And that makes me enjoy the photographic experience so much more. So, I hope you like the photos. Um, to answer the question, is the M9 still relevant as a picture-making machine? in comparison to, to all those other fantastic uh, high-tech uh, picture-making machines, like I mentioned, uh, yep, 11 years old, right? Um, how relevant is it as a camera today? Personally, I love the photos I've made with the M9. The whole Leica M system in general, uh, my Leica M7 is probably my favorite camera uh, of all time. The photos I've taken with the M9, I'm, I'm certain some of them, I'm, I'm pretty sure um, a lot of them, actually, I, I would have been able to take with a, a range find, uh, with a, a SLR as well. But I know, I'm not quite certain if I would have captured the same mood or not. You know, like I mentioned, they are pretty big. Um, but this is not supposed to be a rangefinder versus SLR video, so let's, let's just forget that bit. So is the M9 a camera for you? Um, it depends, it depends if... If you are, uh, if you think you want to get into the rangefinder system, if you want to, uh, into rangefinders, and if, if you've always been wanting to get into the Leica M system, um, Leica M cameras are very expensive. The M9 right now is, um, I'm not quite sure how expensive it is. It's probably going at around anywhere between two and three thousand bucks, maybe two and a half, definitely. Well, let's find the let's find the point in the middle, buddy. Yeah, I mean, 
if, if you want to uh, explore the Leica M system and you don't want to shell out a, a ton of money, um, I think the M9 is definitely worth uh, checking out. I think it's a great camera to get started on. I still think it makes lovely photos today. I'm not going to be selling it at all. And I would definitely recommend for you to check it out. So if you like this video about the M9, then hit the thumbs up button, uh, click on subscribe. There's going to be more content coming soon. So thank you very much for watching. Leave me a comment and um, looking forward to hearing from you. I'll talk to you soon. Let me, let me think of the best way to end this. Huh? <laughs> How about that? All right.